Welcome, everyone. The members of the Town of Darien's Monuments and Ceremonies Commission and the members of Post 6933 of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, thank you for taking time away from your day to remember and honor our veterans. I call upon our VFW Color Guard to raise the flag. I call upon VFW past commander Lenny Hunter to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We thank all our elected officials. First Selectman John Zagrodzki, Selectman Monica McNally, Michael Burke, Marcy Minnick, and Sarah Newman. State Representatives Tracy Mara and Tom O'Day. State Senators Bob Duff and Patricia Billy Miller. We welcome those able to attend today. A special thank you to Linda O'Leary and Karen Dunn our town's two executive secretaries, whose support and efforts have made this ceremony, like so much else in town, run so smoothly. And we especially welcome our veterans. Do we have any World War II veterans among us? Korean War. Sure. Vietnam War. Thank you, gentlemen. Gulf War. <laughs> Afghanistan. Iraq. 
All other operations such as Grenada, Lebanon, Somalia, Panama. Any veterans from the Cold War? Thank you, gentlemen. I ask you now to please turn to the veteran nearest you and say thank you. I now call upon first selectman John Zagrodsky. Thank you all for coming today. As we reflect on Veterans Day this year, it is useful to remember the history that led to the day of appreciation we now celebrate. World War I brought conflict among nations to a new level. Up until then, it was difficult to inflict mass casualties. But new technologies, including machine guns, tanks, aircraft, and poison gas, enabled death and destruction at a speed no one had ever seen before. The war was virtually unprecedented in the slaughter, carnage, and destruction it caused. Around 40 million people were killed or wounded, including an estimated 17 million military and civilian deaths. It led to the fall of four great imperial dynasties in Germany, Russia, Austria-Hungary, and Turkey, resulted in the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, and in its destabilization of European society, laid the groundwork for World War II. The armistice ending the war was signed at 5.45 in the morning on November 11th, 1918 in France. The agreement took effect at 11 a.m. that day, thus officially ending the war on the Western Front on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. From the beginning, countries around the world marked the anniversary of this peace. In Great Britain, the royal family hosted the first official Armistice Day events at Buckingham Palace. In the United States, President Woodrow Wilson likewise proclaimed the first Armistice Day in 1919, although Congress did not formally recognize it until 1926. In addition to the formal holiday, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier monuments were built to symbolize the numerous dead in World War I whose remains could not be identified. Each monument holds the body of an unidentified soldier from the war. Today, there are over 50 countries with such tombs, though some include the dead from other wars. It was hoped by many that World War I, being an unprecedented conflict in its scope, would be the war to end all wars, and that Armistice Day would therefore serve as an eternal warning not to repeat the past. The arrival of World War II complicated that view, and consequently, the meaning of Armistice Day. The United States switched the name of the holiday to Veterans Day in 1954 and repurposed it to honor veterans of the U.S. military in general. In Great Britain, Armistice Day was replaced as a public holiday with Remembrance Sunday. In a way, Veterans Day is a recognition that war is never ending and that the next conflict is right around the corner. Exhibit A is the number of such conflicts going, around, going on around the world right now. As such, we should honor and recognize those who serve today or have served in the past. They are the ones who protect us from this ever-present danger. It is therefore my privilege to issue the following proclamation. Whereas, 
From the revolutionary militia through today's sophisticated defense structure, millions of American men and women have answered the call of duty to defend the hard-won freedoms we enjoy today. And whereas at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 106 years ago today, the armistice marking the end of World War I was signed and Armistice Day was nationally observed. And whereas President Eisenhower, as an expression of gratitude and to honor all those who serve in our armed forces, signed a bill in 1954 proclaiming this day as Veterans Day. And whereas this day is the occasion on which we remember, recognize, and honor our servicemen and women, including those serving in our armed forces today, for their unselfish service in all our wars and military actions. And whereas we cannot reiterate often enough to all our veterans, our immense debt of gratitude for the sacrifices they have made in serving our country and how proud we are of them. Now, therefore, I, John Zagrodsky, first selectman of the town of Darien by virtue of the authority vested in me, ask all the citizens of Darien to join with me today in this very special observance of Veterans Day 2024. Thank you. Now we have readers to read the first two paragraphs of Armistice Day. Today we observe the 106th anniversary of the signing of the armistice, signed in Compagne, France, calling for the cessation of fighting along the Western Front at 11 a.m., November 11th, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. One year later, ceremonies were held in the United States, England, France, Belgium, and Australia marking the first anniversary of the signing of the armistice. People pinned poppies or sprigs of rosemary. The herb of remembrance, to symbolize our commitment to always remember those who have served. Symbolizing both the victory fought for on the battlefields and the victory found in eternal life, the laurel is our final tribute to them. As has been the tradition since that first anniversary in 1919, I now call upon all present to observe a minute of silence. Thank you. Canadian physician Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, after presiding over the funeral of his friend Alexis Helmer, 
who was killed in the Second Battle of Ypres in May of 1915, was inspired to compose the following poem. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And now we'll have a short uh, benediction. We're going to leave with a traditional Irish blessing. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine softly upon your face, and may the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you all for coming. Always remember the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month.